Welcome to Bistex Technology Show. Our guest today is Jeremy G, the Chief Strategy Officer at AT Renew. Now, AT Renew was started in 2011 and has positioned itself as a leader in the internet plus environmental protection circular economy. Now, based in Shanghai, the organization operates a C to B to C model whereby they buy secondhand pre-owned electronic devices from consumers and businesses and use automation and robots and artificial intelligence to inspect the devices and then resell them on the secondhand marketplace. Now, Jeremy, to tell us more, welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. Hi, folks. It's my honor to be here. Now, for a start, give us an overview of AT Renew and its history. Well, our company was founded in 2011, bearing a mission of to give a second life to all idle goods. So starting with consumer electronics, mainly mobile phones, tablets, and laptops, we help circulate these devices in China and around the globe. For last year, uh, we've successfully recycled more than 30 million devices and bring them to the people in need. So that's what we do. So interestingly enough, so could you give insight into your business model? Because obviously this is a very exciting uh, way to be environmentally friendly, but also profitable. That's right. Well, as you know, in China, we have more than um, a thousand recycling kiosks and shops uh, located in more than 200 cities. We leverage these storefronts to uh, meet our customers, to talk to our customers and encourage them to get their old devices traded in or recycled. Also, we have this technology enabled platform to enable the uh, more than 30,000 small merchants in China to recycle uh, the, the pre-owned phones on their own storefronts. So based on that, we've also formed uh, more than six uh, certification centers and more than 90 uh, certification stations so that we can have a better certification and grading of those products. We grade all these products into 40 tiers, very sophisticated, so that each device can has a very specific label before shipping to the end consumers. Okay, and, and I want to delve in on a, a little bit of that just after I ask you about your various uh, platforms that you operate. So on one hand, you operate uh, two marketplaces. You operate PiPi Marketplace, which is for the business to consumer market. You operate PJT Marketplace, which is the business to business uh, uh, se segment. But you, as you pointed out just now, you basically get your feedstock uh, from partners like JD.com online, as well as consumer electronic brands like Xiaomi. Tell us how this all fits into your ecosystem. That's right. Uh, Brian, you just mentioned the, the, the two sides of our platform, the rec recycling side and the consumption side. On the recycling side, uh, we have our self-operated uh, stores and kiosks in more than 200 cities in China. And we also, based on the store's um, delivery capability, we help those smartphone brands and, um, and e-commerce platforms to do their trading platforms. Let's say a consumer wants to buy a brand new phone from JD.com, and he or she can choose the option to do the trading with less price for a brand new phone. And the recycling order was diverted to our platform and we ship those phones while receiving the old one. On the demand side, we have two platforms, you know, to fulfill the demand of having a pre-owned devices with the similar function, but at a lower price. So that's the PiPi platform, mainly sold these devices on JD.com. And we also have the PJT marketplace to fulfill the demand of mass consumption procurement of those pre-owned devices. So there are some dealers 
and merchants along this value chain, they'll get those devices, get them tested, graded, and standardized before remarket to uh, the other uh, markets, like foreign markets. So this is interesting, uh, Jeremy, because essentially then you've captured the whole value chain. On one hand, you make it easy for consumers to then trade in their old phones and and, and you do it at scale compared to in the past and in many markets across Asia, it's the individual shop has to then resell that device. So you take that complexity out of the equation. On the other side, in terms of PJT marketplace, somebody who has a whole business around buying from someone like you in bulk, and then for example, remarketing and redistributing it. So for example, in a China context, I would assume in a second tier and a third tier city. Uh, is that about right in terms of how the, the value of the, your ecosystem works? Yeah, that's right. Because with our own capabilities, with our self-run capabilities, we can only cover a fraction of the market. As you know, China is a very huge and with the very sophisticated market dynamics from top tier cities like Beijing, Shanghai, to the provincial capitals and to the lower tier cities. In the top tier cities, we have our self-operated stores that we can better fulfill the consumer's needs, better connect with consumers and provide them with the best in class services. But in the lower tier cities, especially when you look at it, how people buy their phone. They buy it from their shopping malls. They buy it from local stores. So there are so many retail touch points. We cannot be there by ourselves. So we have to work with partners, with industry participants to better facilitate such service of recycling and trading. And also on the demand side, we can do the direct to consumer sales on JD as an alternative choice for JD consumers. They want brand new devices and also they want inexpensive solutions. But for the people with less disposable income, people in the lower tier cities, in the lower tier consumption groups, they also need their solutions. So the pre owned devices is always their choice. And also in the, some developing, developing markets, like in Southeast Asia, uh, Latin America, or in Africa, uh, people with less income, but still they want a, um, the, the value for money products, uh, they will choose the pre-owned devices. And we try to form a global circulation, a global network of devices make it more relevant, make the technology uh, more universe and can be um, used by anyone. And so this is really interesting because one of the things that caught my eye as I was researching for this interview was the fact that basically in your case, rather than manual inspection, which is what you would associate with something like this, manual inspection, grading, testing, and so forth, Yours is all done in an automated manner and through artificial intelligence. Could you break down and explain to us the process and the technology behind that? Right. Because if you rely simply on the menu check, you'll face the bottleneck of circulation. You cannot meet the consumer's demand and your cost structure will be will not be very efficient. But with the technology of examining the exterior, uh, the, the, the exterior, the surface of the, the phone, you know, some minor um, errors or cracks, you know, this may uh, harm the, 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 the end price. And also when you look at it, at the, the function of the phones, it can be automated, tested, and grade it. And also there are some inferior errors that can be detected through the AI-based technology. Like we've uh, self-operated and we've um, developed this technology using the X-ray 
to examine the phone and find if there is minor error there. So we grade those phones based on the checklist and we show the end selling price so that each phone has its own examine report so that people can trust on the condition of the phone and they can uh, have a very um, uh, the agreed price on those devices. And so J Jeremy, you just hit the nail on the head in terms of that keyword trust. When you're buying secondhand goods, whether it's a car, whether it's a phone or so forth, the key element is the trust in the person or the brand that is actually selling it. So how do you brand yourself as AT Renew so that the Chinese consumer trusts you as well as your export customers? Well, as you can see, uh, technology is one thing, but technology cannot solve all the problems. The way to connect with your customers and provide and deliver your service, we believe uh, now in China, you need to do the face-to-face -face interactions with customers. So if a customer decide to try it out, decide to see the price of the phone, he or she may find it very hard to post the phone, you know, to ship the phone to the warehouse and get a price code. It may take several days and the customer may have the privacy concerns whether the data is, is well protected. Mm -hmm. But with the face-to-face -face connection with customers, we can solve their problems and we can have this instant price code and cashback to the customers. So we solve this um, trust problem through our stores. And also in our backend facilities, in our warehouses, we have this unified and very technology-driven standards to test, grade, and price those products so that the buyers and sellers can agree on a certain level. And also we introduced the bidding system for them to close to, to further close the gap of supply and demand so that we can have a larger circulation at a larger scale. So Jeremy, I want to now zoom in on what you mentioned earlier about the market for secondhand electronics. Now you mentioned that you know there is a great demand, particularly in emerging markets, for repurpose or uh, items that perhaps we're not cutting edge anymore, but are still very, very much in demand. Could you give us a sense of what the market demand for secondhand electronics is like globally? Well, just like the, the market dynamics you know, within China, it always um, shaped from the uh, wealthier group of people of consumption to the less wealthy uh, group of people. Uh, like, um, just give you an example, uh, an iPhone 6 uh, launched uh, in 2015, seven years ago, is still uh, very functional, uh, can be useful uh, in, in many other uh, economies. It's still a 4G phone, it's still usable. Um, it can still last for like two to three years. So uh, for some types of devices, if they are not popular in China and have a higher usage value in the overseas market, will facilitate the global transaction, will um, um, have this delivery solutions for our, cost, for our uh, small business partners. Um, and we can have the local partners in the overseas market for the further distribution. So Jeremy, I want to ask you, and in, 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 in you could give me some specific example. Is your supply chain extend only to selling to a master distributor, perhaps in those markets, or perhaps even moving forward, are you thinking of then operating in those markets? Well, um, on the recycling side, it could be slightly different uh, because each market, a, a, it has very different uh, distribution network of selling the brand new phone because the best transaction scenario of recycling a phone is to recycle it at the storefront when consumers buy a new phone. 
So as in China, about 30% of those phones are shipped online and the rest of 70% are shipped offline. So we can work with the largest uh, B2C uh, platform, uh, JD.com, so that we can have a large transaction volume. But in other countries, it could be different. Like in the US or in Japan market, uh, many people buy their phones directly from the operators, from the carriers. So the partners we, we choose in those markets uh, could be different. So Jeremy, is, is that then um, your strategy moving forward? Because obviously you've built, built a great ecosystem in, in China for yourself. You've, you've uh, put through 31 million devices, as you mentioned last year. Um, is your expansion strategy uh, geared towards uh, replicating your model in different markets, perhaps in Southeast Asia? Well, um, what we have accumulated, we have, what we have accumulated in the past 10 years in China market is that we've developed a successful business model as well as a sophisticated technology called solutions. So we plan to work with uh, local partners in other countries. Uh, we firstly, uh, we, we are about to ship uh, the inspection and grading uh, solutions for them. And our partners, they are specialized in the local market in the connectivity with consumers. So they can have their part to do. And we, we try to, uh, to work uh, on, a, uh, on a service model. On a service model, could you elaborate more on that? Um, we'll, we'll ship our solutions to our partners, uh, in particular, those uh, inspection, grading, and pricing procedures. And we charge them on a service fee model, like, like a dollar per device on testing. Interesting. So that really opens up a whole new business model uh, for people who want to perhaps get into this business, wants to be successful, and all they have to do is partner with you. And then there's a certain amount of quality that is associated with their products. And remember, we talked about trust. That's immediate trust if, if we partner with somebody like you. That's right. We may act as a trust amplifier on their own storefronts and within their own uh, retail uh, network. So we'll set, we'll be at the, like, at the back end of this business and we um, enable our business partners to be more successful in recycling and in trading business. Now, Jeremy, then, because China is obviously ahead of the curve uh, compared to a lot of other markets in terms of the whole value chain of recycling, reducing waste, and reusing these devices, what do you see as key trends in 2022 and 2023? Well, um, the governmental policies especially uh, for the uh, uh, carbon neutral and for the uh, climate change, these no, new policies are actually uh, act as the stimulator uh, for the uh, recycling business in China now. And we anticipate the business, uh, the, the, the policies uh, will be consistent and it can act as a driving force uh, for our business. Uh, in this year and in the next year. Uh, to elaborate a little bit more on that, as you know, uh, the local authorities in Shenzhen city now uh, have, they, they published a guideline for the, um, for the uh, quality of the pre-owned products and for the, for the refurbishment of the products so that the business participants in this industry can have a very uh, clear guidance uh, of the business. And also recently, as you know, 
uh, the big cities in China uh, just uh, um, ha have the relief from the lockdowns of yes. the COVID-19. Uh, the Shenzhen uh, authorities also uh, launched uh, a uh, subsidy program for the recycled products, 5% um, uh, of the uh, total sales price. Jeremy, it's been a fascinating conversation to find out about AT Renew. But before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Well, um, we've um, enjoyed um, a successful journey of the past 10 years. Uh, in China, um, the recycling and circular business is still on a very early stage. And we anticipate that still there is a long way to go. And with a very um, clear strategy of expanding our business in the lower tier cities and the globalization strategy, uh, we aim to, to achieve a stable growth in the coming years and to serve more customers uh, on the both consumer side and on the business side. Jeremy, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you, Brian. Thank now, you. I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Jeremy G, the Chief Strategy Officer at AT Renew on BizTech's Technology Show. Now, this video and podcast will be on our various platforms, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please subscribe and like our various platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.